Assalamu alaikum everyone, dear sisters, dear brothers. Jazakum Allah khair. Today, alhamdulillah, azawajal, we have special guest, Dr. Hani Albanna, the founder of Islamic Relief. Uh, so, uh, inshallah, uh, welcome, Dr. Hani. Uh, Dr. Han, inshallah, he will share with us uh, some advices, uh, some encouragements from his side uh, that can encourage us, inshallah, in the work. Uh, Dr. Hani, Jazakallah khair, Bismillah. Alhamdulillah, wa sallam wa rasulullah. Uh, thank you again, Durban office, all the staff, all the volunteers, all the sisters, all the brothers. And uh, it's an honor for me to end my visit to you today after seeing the great work that has been done with limited resources, but with great heart with limited resources, but with vision, determination, commitment, and submission to the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and submission to the cause of alleviating poverty of the people in South Africa. And uh, being honored also to learn from all of you, all of you, regardless from yourself you are my teacher from yourself sister you are another teacher from any and every one of you the more each one of you travel the more he or she learns more the more he and she can have more risk can have more experience can have more wisdom wisdom you get it from the ordinary people, from the local community. Why you value the local communities? Because they are the first responder to anything, whether they are to the good news or to the bad news. And they are the first people to stand up for the community. Flood, fire, earthquake, war, they come out with their hearts, support the weak one, and the vulnerable one. So over the last 10 days, nearly since I came to South Africa, Islamic Relief, to Johannesburg, Durban, and uh, Cape Town, Alhamdulillah, I go back with a lot of knowledge. I go back with a lot of motivation. I go back with a lot of direction for the new vision that we have to create for you and you have to create for us. Don't undermine the role you are playing because you are an officer or you are a secretary or your job is not at the top. Any job is as good as the other job. Any job, including volunteers, who coming to the organization are as good as the chairman, as good as the president, as good as the chief executive officer, as good as the director or the trustees. But job means responsibility. Responsibility means accountability. Accountability means clarity, and clarity means transparency. If we are not transparent, we are going to be hanged before Allah in the grave, maybe in our life, or in the grave, or on the straight path, or when He asks us from our ankles. Because you made responsible, but you did not take your responsibility. You made, resp you made, you made responsible but you wasted the resources. No matter what your job is or was, there's no difference between a security guard 
who can get bribery or a boss who can get bribery and become corrupt. Both of them are corrupt and in the eyes of Allah, they are corrupt. In the eyes of the people, I can deceive the people, but I cannot deceive myself and I cannot deceive Allah. So don't run away. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, if you don't come to me to ask for your right, which was not your right, you might be very good and better than your brother and your sister in the way you speak, the way you perform your case. So if you take the right of your sister and brothers, you have taken a part of hellfire with you. But it's not yours. This piece of land is mine. It's not yours. Huh? This cloth is mine. It's not yours. This property is mine. It's not yours. You take it because you are very good in defending yourself. You come. You know what will happen? We come carrying such property or such a car or such a piece of land on our head. Because of responsibility. You can imagine that you stole in five acres. You come carrying five acres in your head. <coughs> cows. You come carrying cows in your head. And in public, it will be public scandal. This is responsibility. Responsibility is transparency and accountability, as I said before. So if you come to the public domain, when we meet, we deal, with the public money, don't play game with that. Better not to touch it. And the only people like you who has been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be entrusted, but stand up for it. Because if you measure the length of our life, it's less than a second in the life to come. Ancestors fighting. Brothers fighting for a second, for a second, only a second. Because if I live to become 100 years, one day before Allah is 100,000, is, is 1,000 years. Another day, 50,000 years, what you count. So what sort of long life we live on earth to waste the eternal life to come later on? You have to balance between how Allah brought us in this direction to let us to start this journey with the people who always make dua for us and how others have chosen their way. Actually, I say that I have to another 10 years to go, 5 years to go, 20 years to go, 40 years to go. It's not 40 years. So it's five years. So it's a second. It's a second. But nafsun ma qaddamat Let your soul to look to what it has been preparing for tomorrow. For tomorrow. You know, sister, tomorrow will come now. This could be my last second in my life. Nobody knows. We saw the videos of young people, not old people, praying in the mosque or walking in the street and they fall down. Or some of the TV presenters, while she or he was presenting, they collapsed and they died. When the time comes, Allah does not consult you. Our life starts by a second, in a second. Our journey could go forever. Our journey could go for a long time, as we describe. But this long time is not more than another second compared with the life to come. We have, we have during this short life on earth, which could be a second in front of the eyes of Allah, to use it to plan our journey. Don't come and say that Allah has chosen it for me. Allah gave us this. What is this? Brain, mind, 
soul, heart, to choose. That's why Allah, by his own hand, has created the whole life and the planet preparing this for us because he wanted us to become on this planet living comfortably. So when you have been chosen and you went because of your intention to the right direction, ask the others to plan for their journey. The journey, my journey started with my father marrying my mother. I have no choice in this. But soon I came out from the womb of my mother and then become able to define the right and wrong at the age of 12, 13, 14. Here, my life journey starts. And here, I need to seek advice from each and every one of us. And here, I have to get all the necessary means to empower myself to end the journey on the direction that Allah wants me to end it. And don't say it is Qadr. No, no, Allah decided me to become a Kafir. If he wants me to become a Muslim, he could have made me a Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah la yughayr ma biqawmin hatta yughayr ma biqawmin. Allah does not change the people unless them themselves take the initiative of changing themselves. So to end my journey in Durban today, as I say, or I said to you, very happy to stay more, to learn more, and to be with you more, to understand how nice and difficult the challenge you are facing, but how wonderful you are and were in meeting the challenges and changing the challenges into opportunities. You are the opportunity makers. And I am the one who will be suffering from the challenges because I cannot create the opportunities you are making. So I thank all of you, sisters and brothers, especially this sister coming. Your project for me was a journey that I wanted to start in 2004, but I failed. I failed. Because we wrote, the, the, not the concept, the idea of the project. Muhammad Abu Majd and myself, in Los Angeles airport, about August, July 2004, but I failed to do it, and you are doing it. <laughs> No, it's happening. That's why yesterday you elevated me to the moon. So I'm sitting next to you now on top of the moon, hanging my legs down to the earth. Can you bring me down, please? You have another elevator to bring me down? I don't. <laughs> so why you are giggling? Um. Because at least I made somebody's dream come true. You are the one who gets the reward for it. Oh. Because you made it. For me, I talked about it. The difference between me and her, that she's a doer and I'm a talker. I'm like a parrot, you know, the black bird. <laughs> quack, 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 quack. Are you sniffing? <laughs> Don't blow your nose in my face, please. <laughs> and don't throw something else in my face. So not every one of us could become a doer like her. But she's vegetarian. The animals are afraid. <laughs> are, are afraid of her. And the animals are very upset. You know why? Because the cow will go next to her, say, why don't you eat me? My, my food. And the goat will say, I need to be eaten by you. I was created as a goat or as a sheep. Oh my God. For you to roast me, to boil me, to grill me, and to debone me. So, you know, can you see the sheep here? 
Look at her. She's looking at you. This goat, this buffalo, this cow, this camel, this vision, all of them wants you, want you to eat them. Okay. <laughs> I will teach you how to eat. <laughs> Again? <laughs> May Allah bless you, inshallah. I'm very happy, happy for the sister to let me standing next to her. I'm very happy for you to let me talk to you. And I'm very happy for myself that Allah brought me here to be with you. Being with you is being with the right people at the right time, at the right place, and for the right cause. That's why my 10th day in South Africa ending today was success. I still have got a three, four days in Cape Town to go, inshallah. And with, uh, with uh, Cape Town team, inshallah. I thank you, and if any one of you would like to ask me any questions, I'm ready. Like I said yesterday, between the deboning, the grilling, the boiling, the skinning, the roasting, I am here for anybody to ask me. Not in arrogance, but if I know the answer, I will answer. If I don't know the answer, Alas. So what? Yes, sister. Advice you have for me as a female fundraiser from yeah. your journey. From my journey, we are always uh, backward in using our sisters in fundraising. Not using her to her capacity. Because we look at the capacity of the woman with my, our eyes, but we not not look at the capacity of the woman as Allah put it in her heart and her mind and her soul. In the good old days, when you travel to the Middle East, we used to take some sisters with us, just to sit down with the wives and the daughters of the businessmen to get us more money, and that's it. No good. When you are a fundraiser, or a project manager, or a finance manager, or psychosocial support officer, or a psychiatrist, or a doctor. You have a role. Because they see the world differently. If you and me, come and stand next to me here. Please. Both of us are looking at this direction. She will see the image different to me. Differently. Because you have been created differently. It's what our Amawlana and the Ulama and Mufti and to understand that the woman feeling is different. The woman emotion is different. The woman knowledge is different. The woman vision is different. They have to be used to the maximum of their capacity, not to give them the role that we want to give it to them. They should not only be used as a, an image on the front page of the magazine saying, hey, we have women working for us or volunteers for us. It's no good. She's not being used to the maximum. Mm -hmm. Because the maximum is your potential. And if you get the chance to uh, explore your potential, or what, what potential? To explore your potential? Or to, to maximize your potential? Right. Is that right? Yeah. Huh? You will produce a lot. Because the character of a woman is very finding, detailed. Mm -hmm. hey, I have one daughter. She make me sometimes sick because of the amount of work she does to clean a toilet which you cleaned it yesterday. <laughs> and it's clean. <laughs> For me, it's clean. For her sometimes. Or to do AP. <laughs> you know, the, and she does it. And this kind of uh, nature inside the woman, I have to understand it. Before exploring her, her potential, or your potential, or your potential. Because you have a lot of potentials. Why only we look at the woman as something negative? Why? If she is negative, I am negative. Once upon a time, when Prophet ﷺ sent al muslimina to Abyssinia, and they were headed by Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, 
He stood in front of Amr ibn As. Was not a Muslim at that time. Amr ibn As. And he was making mockery of women. Ah, oh, woman, woman. You know what Abu Jafar said to him? Are you making fool of your mother? Who have you in her womb for nine months? Who breastfed you and look after you and they clean your backside for eight years? Are you, are you actually making fool of your daughter? Making fool of your wife? Be ashamed what you say. Or shame on you, as sister said. You can't shame your mother because she's your mother and she's a woman. If your mother was not there, could not have been born. Because men, men do not have, unless now they are trying to do something. You know. <laughs> they are, they are <laughs> it, it will not work. But anyway, we have to utilize every individual in the society Sorry. Uh, to their maximum potential. Thank you. Anything else? Any other question from brothers and sisters? Faddali. You want to speak? When you focus on what people need from you, if what they need from you needs you to keep quiet, you keep quiet. To jump from the window, jump from the window. To stand for them and get the first bullet, stand and get the first. Sheikh Sharawi once upon a time said in the battlefield, the military battlefield, you know what he said? Some, you add nas, some cowardness could lead into victory. This is exactly what Hazrat Khalid ibn Walid did. At the time of the battlefield of Mu'ta, Three Amir of the army become Shaheed. Ja'far, Abdullah ibn Rawah, I can't remember the third one. Zaid? I'm not sure. But anyway, Zaid ibn Sabit and Zaid ibn Harissa. Zaid ibn Harissa. Deadly battle. What he did, you know what he did? In the evening, when it's dark, he made a trick. By reshuffling the army as uh, and to make a noise of the horses to give the impression to the enemies that there's a lot of supply came in the evening. So they keep quiet till the morning come. For an hour or so, till he pulled, withdrew the whole army back. Because 3,000 people cannot defeat 40,000 or 20,000 people. So when they came to Medina, the children said, those people who are runners, they run away, they run away, they run away. Professor Assam said, no, those people are the people who are going to go back again. And the same Khalid ibn Walid, after a year or two, at the time of Umar ibn Khattab, after the death of, Prophet, of, of uh, the Prophet Sallam and of Abu Bakr, he is the same one who won the battlefield of Yarmouk. Same one. But at that time, he has to show cowardness to recruit actually himself and go back again. All right, anything else? Don't be shy to ask anything. Everything you say is right. Yes? Yes, brother? How is the journey after, after stepping down from Saudi Arabia? If I had a nice time to travel the world, to have holiday, which I don't have money for a day, I could have been bored. But to be very honest, this is what my wife said. You become more busy than when you were with Islamic life. <laughs> Seriously. Because the fruit of what we are planting is not bearing, the trees are not, it's not trees yet. The fruit of emotion and of uh, relief comes very quickly because they will give the money straight. But the tree of networking, communication, capacity building, public awareness does not come 
it is a seed going through, as you see, the uh, rocky, rocky soil, rocky soil, granite soil. This kind of soil needs special about values. When your people are dying, you want to respond, everybody will give you money. But when we tell them what I'm saying now, none of them will give us money. As I mentioned yesterday about a good movie, is halal, and been seen by the millions, or the hundreds of millions, okay? A bad video film made by a non-professional brother, young man, nobody sees it. So why don't you invest in this and consider that this is vital, it's important. The media is important, the drama is important. Who on earth will let us to love the, the, the scholars of Islam? Unless we make a proper high quality movie or drama about them, isn't it? Most of the drama made about them by uh, Iqra TV, it's a Sheikh Salah Kamil, and uh, not uh, ART, yeah. not, not Ruthana, not Ruthana. <laughs> Actually, oh, it's just second hand actors and actresses. Not big budget for them. So you find people standing still in front of the camera, and the, 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 the spectator will be bored of looking at a second hand actor. But if the money invested rightly, like what happened in the, in, in the, in the movie of uh, Arisala. I don't know how many hundreds of million people have seen it since Till the 70s. Huh? Till now. Till now. It came out in the 70s. And how many Muslims came from America, from different countries of the world, to see the message of Islam in three, uh, three hours video. And you know who supported it? You will not imagine. Huh? It was no, 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 no. It was originally filmed in Morocco. Yeah. Then the Saudi Sheikh told the king and told the other institution they are showing the Sahaba Okram. The Saudi king, whatever it is, told Morocco that. Either you stop filming or we have a diplomatic problem with you. Mustafa Al-Aqad went to a country where she, you will not believe that this man who did it. He came back to the east. He crossed Algeria, from Morocco to Algeria, to Tunisia to what after, before Tunisia? What's before? Libya. Libya. Yeah. He came to Gaddafi, accepted it. Yeah. Accepted it. Because there was a political and a problem between the Saudi and the Libyan. Their differences, their differences allow him to build the scene in the desert of Libya and complete the movie. And the second film he did was The Line of the Desert, which is Omar bin Mukhtar, in Libya as well. In Libya as well. So sometimes, you might think that the one who should support you is the one who believes in your cause. But the one who let the Prophet ﷺ enter Mecca after he came back from Taif, his name was Mut'am ibn Adi, was not a Muslim. And Prophet ﷺ was stoned by the stone and was bleeding and called names and, and, and. And the Mut'am came out in the middle of Mecca and in front of Kaaba as Kafir and stood with full armed to say, we protect Muhammad. <coughs> Quraysh, Quraysh was shocked because they thought that he became a Muslim. So they asked their Mut'am, are you a Muslim? He said, no, I'm going to protect Muhammad and to honor Muhammad, nobody should touch him. Mecca told him, we'll honor your A, we'll honor your honor, respect your honor. Was it also not Muslim? The registration of Islamic Khalifa at UN was not a Muslim was a Catholic supporting us, not the three Arab Muslims who were there and dumped us in a dustbin or rubbish bin or whatever it is. He is the one who came out. 
So don't only wait for support from people of your color, from people of your culture, from people of your belief. Support can come from anybody. Anybody else? After, after giving up on your dream of implementing the project, 